Let's talk about potatoes. Potatoes are notoriously high in potassium, which can be problematic for people with kidney disease. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about different ways that potatoes are prepared and how the nutritional content can vary depending on how they're made. I'm gonna talk about how you can prepare potatoes to be a bit lower in potassium, and I'm also gonna talk about some other things you need to consider about potatoes if you have kidney disease. Let's first talk about potassium though. First thing I wanna say about potassium in potatoes is that not every person with kidney disease needs to worry about their potassium. If you haven't been told by your doctor or dietitian to limit your potassium intake, then I don't recommend that you avoid fruits and vegetables because of their potassium content. Fruits and vegetables contain a lot of beneficial things for your kidneys, and we don't wanna limit them if we don't have to. There are a lot of things that can affect your blood levels of potassium that have nothing to do with how much potassium you're actually eating. That being said, there are plenty of people with kidney disease who have been told to limit their potassium intake, and in situations like that, we often try to promote lower potassium fruits and vegetables as a way to get in all the healthy plant nutrients and limit how much higher potassium fruits and vegetables we eat. So just how much potassium is in potatoes? Well, that's gonna depend on what kind of potato you're eating and how much of it you eat. A large baked potato contains about 1,600 milligrams of potassium. That is a lot of potassium. Most kidney professionals consider a vegetable to be high in potassium if it contains more than 200 milligrams of potassium per serving. So a large baked potato contains a lot of potassium. However, a large baked potato is also way more than one serving. We typically consider a serving of fruit or vegetable to be one half cup, and a large baked potato is about five servings. So if you were to divide that potato into five separate servings, then you're looking at about 320 milligrams of potassium per serving, which would still put potatoes in the category of high potassium, but at least not crazy high like before. Serving size is really important when considering potatoes in the kidney diet, especially if you need to limit your potassium. But serving size is also important if you have diabetes. Potatoes are starchy and they will raise your blood sugar. If you eat a large baked potato, it's going to raise your blood sugar a lot. Limiting your potatoes to an appropriate portion size will help ensure that you don't spike your blood sugar quite as much. Let's take a look at French fries, which is a very popular way of eating potatoes in the US. One medium McDonald's French fry has 670 milligrams of potassium, according to their website, which is a lot. Um, another bummer about French fries is that the vast majority of them contain phosphorus additives, including these McDonald's French fries. Phosphorus additives are not good for your cardiovascular system, so we want to avoid them whenever we can. Um, I did find a few brands of French fries without additives, and I'll include those on my website, and I'll include a link to that website in the description of this video. A small French fry has 470 milligrams of potassium, and then a kid size French fry has 230 milligrams of potassium. So if you're on a potassium restriction and you're really craving French fries, I would stick to the kid size portion and really savor those fries. The kid size portion would also contain less phosphorus additives, so all the more reason to choose the smaller portion. Now let's look at mashed potatoes, another popular way to eat potatoes. A serving of mashed potatoes is one half cup, and I would encourage you to measure out your mashed potatoes the next time you eat them to get an idea of how much you're eating, because my guess is that it's probably more than half a cup. But a single half cup serving of mashed potatoes has about 300 milligrams of potassium. Now, the potassium content of mashed potatoes can vary depending on what kind of potatoes you're making them with and how you make them. In a traditional mashed potato recipe, you will boil the potatoes to get them soft before mashing. When it comes to potassium, boiling actually helps reduce the potassium content. The heat helps to break down the cell walls so potassium can be released from the little cells of potato. And then potassium loves to spread out in water. So as the potassium is released from the cells, it likes to migrate out of the potato and into the water. So boiled potatoes will tend to be lower in potassium than potatoes that were cooked in dry methods like baking or roasting. To get your potatoes even lower in potassium, you can do what's called double boiling potatoes. The general idea is to cut your potatoes and place them in a pot of water. You should be using twice as much water as potatoes. Bring the pot of water and the potatoes to a boil, then drain and rinse the potatoes. 
place the potatoes back in the pot and fill once more with twice as much fresh water and then boil them again until they reach the desired tenderness. Then you can drain off the liquid and rinse the potatoes. If you do this, you can reduce the amount of potassium in your potatoes by about 40%. A few key points to keep in mind though when you're double boiling your potatoes is that the smaller the potato pieces, the more potassium will be removed. Boiling whole potatoes is not gonna leach as much potassium out as using the diced up potatoes. So be sure to cut them pretty small to get the most potassium out. Second, I wanna emphasize that you need to use enough water. The more water you use, the more potassium will be removed. So use twice as much water as potatoes. If you don't use enough water, it's not gonna remove as much potassium. And you wanna be sure to change out the water when you boil the second time. So that's how you can lower the amount of potassium in mashed potatoes. The double boiled mashed potatoes probably still won't be considered a low potassium food, and they're still gonna be high in starch, so double boiling doesn't really give you permission to eat as much as you want, but it will lower the potassium in the recommended half cup portion. Lastly, I wanna talk about potato chips. One ounce is considered to be a serving size of potato chips, and one ounce of potato chips is typically gonna contain around 350 milligrams of potassium. A typical bag that you might find at the grocery store, though, can contain eight ounces. So if you sit down and mindlessly munch away half a bag of potato chips, that's 1,400 milligrams of potassium, so it adds up quickly. And just FYI, those smaller bags that you usually find near the checkout at stores, those are usually around two and a half to three servings. So this little bag of Lay's potato chips may have only 350 milligrams of potassium per serving, but there are 920 milligrams of potassium in the whole bag. So again, be careful with your serving sizes. I'm not one to tell you that you can never have potatoes again or you can never have chips again, but we do need to keep the portion sizes in mind. Some other things to keep in mind about potatoes if you have kidney disease, potatoes are high in oxalates. So if you're prone to calcium oxalate stones, you probably want to limit how much potato you eat. Each 100 gram portion of potatoes has about 45.8 milligrams of soluble oxalate. If you're not prone to calcium oxalate stones, then you really don't need to worry about the oxalate content of potatoes. A half cup serving of potatoes contains about 45 milligrams of phosphorus, and the phosphorus found in potatoes is natural and poorly absorbed. So potatoes are considered a low phosphorus food. However, a lot of packaged potato foods are gonna contain those phosphorus additives, so you always have to read labels. You're gonna to wanna to scan the ingredient list to see if any of the ingredients contain the letters P-H-O-S. If you see that in one of the ingredients, then you wanna choose a different option. And then we also want to consider the sodium content of potato products. A lot of potato products are going to contain a lot of sodium. Whenever possible, we want to choose foods with fewer milligrams of sodium than calories. For more information on kidney-friendly fruits and vegetables, check out our website. And if you like videos like this and want me to make more, let me know by liking this video and commenting on what you want to see next. Thanks.